Welcome to 13 Cubed. In this episode, we're going to take a look at a very specific RDP scenario that I encountered a few weeks ago and the resultant event log entry that is produced when this scenario is in play. I think you'll be a bit surprised by this one. As a hint, it involves NLA. And if you're not sure what that is, well, stay tuned. Before we get started, this episode is sponsored by 13 Cubed Training Courses. So head over to training.13cubed.com today to take a look at the available training courses from 13 Cubed. They include a certification and digital badge attempt and 365 days of access, plenty of time to absorb the course content. It's also important to note that these courses have and will continue to be updated over time to ensure that they're always relevant. In fact, investigating Windows endpoints has already received several updates since it was released in early 2023. Now, these aren't major updates to the content, but they are updates to reflect changes to Windows Forensic Artifacts and other things that I've learned that I think will help you in real-world investigations. Okay, head over to training.13cube.com today to check them out. Let's get started. If you're a longtime viewer of 13 Cubed, this is probably going to look familiar to you. This is called the RDP flowchart, and it's one of the earlier 13 Cubed cheat sheets that I made. And it's pretty self-explanatory. At the top of each page, you'll find an RDP-related scenario, such as a successful logon in this case. And then you'll find the series of event IDs that you can expect and the event logs or channels within which each of those event IDs are expected to be found. So this just tells you what you should look for on the destination system, not the source system, but the destination system, which would be, of course, the system to which you attempted to RDP. You can see the successful logon here, the unsuccessful logon, a session disconnect via window close, session disconnect via start disconnect, and on and on. Now, I'm not going to cover that here because that's already been done in previous 13 cubed episodes. Instead, what I'd like to talk about is something called RDP NLA, or Network Level Authentication. I'm guessing that you've heard that term before, but do you know what it means? Well, in short, it means that the RDP authentication happens prior to the session being established on the target system, which probably sounds pretty intuitive. That sounds like the way it should happen. But in the old days, prior to NLA, let's say server 2003, what would happen is you would RDP to a server 2003 box, and you would actually have a session on that box and be looking at the Windows logon prompt, where you would see the username and the password and the little Windows Server 2003 logo. And then you could attempt to authenticate. So effectively, the session was established prior to authentication. And that was in the old days before we had NLA. Now, with NLA, that happens first. So you first have to authenticate successfully, and then you actually can enter a session on that remote box, which makes sense. So what does that have to do with anything here? Well, it turns out that there is a special event log residue that you would look for in that particular scenario, and it's not actually reflected on this cheat sheet because it's not a 4624 type 10 or type 7 for a reconnect. It's not either of those. Instead, it's a type 3. That's right, a type 3. And you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute, why would a type 3 4624 be associated with RDP? I thought that was associated with a network connection like, say, SMB. If someone goes to start, run, and types in slash slash computer name slash C dollar or something. And yes, that's true, but it's also associated with RDP when NLA is in play. So let me show you how this works. First off, you'll notice that I have an RDP session pulled up to this Windows 11 box, and I already have the Windows Event Viewer pulled up. We're looking at the security event log now. And by the way, under saved logs, you can see Microsoft, Windows, Terminal Services, Local Session Manager Operational, and Remote Connection Manager Operational. These are the primary two Windows event logs or Windows event channels in which you would find most of the events covered on the RDP flowchart that we just looked at. So in other words, your 1149s, your 21 through 25s, and so on, the normal terminal services event IDs that you're used to. We're not even going to open those logs because I think you're already familiar with that at this point. Here though, you can see that the top most event happens to be in this case a 4799, which is just a security group enumeration. No big deal here. What I'm going to do though, is go ahead and close this RDP session. So I'm just going to go ahead and click the X to disconnect the session. And now I'm going to run MSTSC and I'm going to click connect again, but this time I'm going to use a different account. So I'm going to use the account called Greg, and hopefully I remember the password for this. This is a new account that I created. 
So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And at this point, we should log in shortly as the Greg Brady user. That's right, the Brady Bunch. I couldn't think of another unique name to make a user, so I just chose that. Okay, so here we go. At this point, we have just logged in as Greg Brady. And as you can see, we have what looks like a successful RDP into this box. Let's go ahead and click on Greg Brady and sign out at this point. I'm actually going to go ahead and completely sign out of that user. Now, let's pull up our remote desktop connection again. And this time, we're going to go back to my main user. So we're going to go to the Davis RG user here, if I can type that correctly. And let's log in here and go back to our Windows event IDs that we have opened here with the security log. You'll notice it's 3.04 p.m. local time. If I press F5 to refresh this, let's go ahead and go to the first 3.04 event that we see here. And you'll see that's a 46.72. You can see that right here. Let's just go up a little bit. And well, there's a 46.24. So let's see, what do we have here? There is a log on type three. And if you scroll down, you'll notice it says the workstation name is DFIR box, which was indeed the name of the system from which the RDP session was established. And you can see its source IP address right here, which is correct. But again, this is a 4624 type three. And notice you see it right here. If we go up a little bit, you're going to see the 4634 type three in close proximity to the 24 type three. And if you go up again, there's the 4672 because this was an admin account, 4672. Here's a 4624 type three that's recorded again. Let's just keep going up here and see if we see, yep, there we go, the 4624 type seven, because remember this was an RDP session reconnect because I had just closed or disconnected the session for the Davis RG user. And in this case, I just reconnected to that same session, which is why the Windows Event Viewer was already opened, right? And there's the type seven, which is probably what you expected. But did you expect to see the type three? And if you're not familiar with the RDP in LA, I'm guessing that you probably didn't expect to see a type three in association with this, but yet there it was. Okay, so that's all well and good, but now let's try a different scenario. Once again, I'm going to disconnect from the Davis RG RDP session, but leave it active. And this time I'm going to pull up the terminal services log on again. I'm going to click connect. I'm going to click more choices, use a different account. And this time I'm going to use Marsha. That's right, Marsha Brady. So it turns out Marsha is not permissioned, not authorized to RDP into this system. But yet I've typed in the correct password. Let's press OK and see what happens. Notice it says the connection was denied because the user account is not authorized for remote login. What does that tell you? That tells you that the authentication was likely successful, but the authorization was not. So what happens in that case? What would you expect to see? Well, let's go ahead and reconnect to this with the Davis RG user so we can go back to the Windows event log that we have opened here. And notice that the local time is 3.06. I'm going to press F5. And now let's just scroll down to the, I don't know, somewhere around the first of the 3.06 events that we have here. And notice that you have at 3.06.09, a 4624 type three for Marsha. Now, did you expect that to happen? We have a 4624 indicating a success. It even says an account was successfully logged on. It is a type three and it is for the Marsha user. Did the Marsha user establish an RDP connection to this box? The answer is no. Authentication was successful. Authorization was not. Yet we still have an event ID 4624 because the authentication happened before the authorization and it was successful. And you can see it right there. If we go up a bit, you'll see the 4634 right after that. Again, 4634 type three for Marsha. And if we keep scrolling up from here, you'll notice the 4624 type three recorded again here for Marsha. You can see the workstation name and other information here as you would expect. Let's keep going up here. You'll see the 4672, but that notice is for the Davis RG user. So notice that the gap between 30609 local time and then 30633. So that's the end of our events associated with Marsha. And then the next thing you have is the 30633 event, which is a 4672 for the Davis RG user, 4672. There's the 4624 type three for Davis RG, 4634, 4672. And let's just go up until we find the 4624 
for the Davis RG user that we just logged into. And there we go, 4624 type seven. That's the session reconnect where I literally just RDP back into this to show you the Windows event logs. So look, the takeaway here is pretty simple. Takeaway is that you're going to have a 4624 type three associated with RDP NLA, network level authentication. And assuming the authentication was successful, that event ID is going to be recorded not only for successful RDP connections for which a user is authorized to log into a box, but also in scenarios where authorization fails, but authentication succeeds, you may still see, or you will still see a 4624 type three, as long as NLA is in play, which it should be on any modern system. So that's another thing to look for because Within a, an investigation that I was working on not too long ago, I had a similar scenario where someone was attempting to RDP to various servers for which they were not authorized, but we still captured on those servers the 4624 type threes for the user accounts they were using because, again, the authentication was successful. It was just the authorization that was not. That is all I wanted to cover in this episode. So I hope you found this information useful. And I hope it's something that you can use in your investigations. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next 13 Cubed episode.